get rough. And I just wanted to state um, that there's a slew of licenses being issued in downtown that threaten our neighborhood. Uh, denials are almost unheard of. And this proposal would only benefit business owners. It's not the best way to address feed concerns. Uh, we're concerned about the impact on community wellness and bar and community input. Numerous harms are associated with alcohol consumption and concentration, and in Skid Row, a major theme is a, a recovery from addiction. We need a diversity of uses that support wellness. Our experience shows that enforcement will be ineffective. It takes many years to fight problematic locations, and the burden will again fall on community members to document, report, advocate, and face disappointment and disillusionment in a failed process. Uh, I'm submitting a written copy of our concerns about, uh, and also our opposition to this program, which was recently submitted to Plum and emailed to you as well. And proprietors, Epi Design and Consulting. We are a firm that helps hospitality and restaurant uses through the development process. We see firsthand what these individuals go through, especially now with increased sustainability requirements, such as trash recycling programs, uh, energy requirements, uh, labor increases, these guys are up against a number of challenges. Uh, I think this is something that the city can do to finally kind of give them something for them, which they have not received in some time. I feel confident that the Department of City Planning can better refine some of these conditions or measures to kind of address some of these uh, issues that the neighbors have brought up or, or uh, communities have brought up, such as large businesses, to better refine the definition of small business, maybe to uh, the occupancies as outlined in the Department of, or rather the California Building Code. Uh, the occupancy is less than 50 seats. Uh, we have put together a series, a list of recommendations for the ordinance, and thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Nick Weinstein, and I work for uh, Restaurant Tours in Los Angeles, and we support this ordinance because we feel that it's really narrowly tailored and helps us open our businesses or clear one potential hurdle, hurdle faster to open our businesses faster so then we can keep employing people because we have had issues with bureaucracy in the past where there have been months long delays, tens of thousands of dollars in overages as some of the other people have noted here today too. Um, and we've had to push start dates for employees that could have been working almost immediately. Thank you. Thank you. She watchdog organization. And according to a peer review study we conducted um, that was peer reviewed and published we found that in Los Angeles public city and county, uh, public cost of alcohol are $2.2 billion. That includes policing, emergency services, court costs, hospitalization, and probation. We also found that the health effects include six people die each day from alcohol in LA County and city. That's one person every four hours. 40% of homicides are alcohol related. Half of all assaults, most of those are domestic abuse. And alcohol is the number one factor behind gun violence. Zoning laws can have a detrimental effect on the health and economic development of communities if the public safety and public health impacts are not taken into account. So we encourage you to take those into account. But we oppose this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a director of Puerto Salud. And I'm also a member of Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance, better known as Alvi Tapa. And uh, I'm here also to uh, oppose uh, this fast track uh, uh, motion ordinance. And uh, I'm appealing to you on the planning and land use side. It's the only really, ABC sending out uh, licenses like candy. And this is really the only process or the power a city has is uh, the land use. Uh, so I really caution you, you might be giving up your power. Uh, you know, you're here to protect the interests of the city and the residents, and uh, you're clearly giving that up if you allow this to go through and you, you allow clearances for these type of businesses. And we're not against business, I would say, but if you're in the restaurant business, then why do you need to sell alcohol? I mean, if you're in the restaurant business, then rely on your product and make the profit that way, not at the profit and expense of our community. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, ordinance is designed specifically to ignore the neighborhood count. One of the specific reasons is to ignore neighborhood council's opinions, and I don't think the neighborhood council system should be pushed away uh, for this streamline. I think it's very important that the community. I think it's very important that the community. Um, 
each community where these bars and restaurants are going into um, understand what's going into their community. That is why the neighborhood council system exists. Thank you. Thank you. And I am the co-chair of the Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance. Council member Krikorian's proposed ordinance makes it easy, cheap, and fast for new alcohol businesses to open. Our neighborhoods are already flooded with businesses that sell alcohol. LA DAPA opposes council member Krikorian's ordinance in its current form because it's weak on alcohol. It would allow happy hours, drink specials, minimum drink requirements, and alcohol advertising, all of which research shows contribute greatly to alcohol problems. This ordinance will have a dramatic impact on our neighborhoods. There will be more drunk driving, more injuries, more crime, and more public disturbances. We hope Council Member Krikorian takes this seriously by including stronger alcohol conditions. This ordinance needs to be good for communities, not just for businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Because of seeing many businesses in our district having to spend up to upwards of $100,000 to be able to open up a small restaurant in our district. Um, we've worked with many in this room to come up with these restrictive conditions. Actually, uh, the conditions came from, the original set of conditions came from some in this room that have been using these as models to go to CUP hearings and request these sorts of conditions. We are trying to incorporate the most restrictive of the conditions within this policy. Um, we, this policy creates jobs and eliminates empty, blighted storefronts within our communities by, by creating restaurants and other opportunities in those locations. Um, we, we, we look forward to continuing to work with many in this room to make changes and modifications to the proposed ordinance as it goes through the process. Some of them that we are looking at is... Uh, order. That's out of order. Yeah. Yeah. We want to hear what you have to say. No, we have a lot to say. I'm, I'm fine to follow the same procedures as everybody else and have... Okay. ...obviously is uh, serious for us. Uh, your presentation implies that this is uh, intended for small businesses, but uh, there's very little differentiation between uh, what, what actually makes a small business. You have a 200 seat limit, but uh, I also heard discussions uh, during the council set portion of this that they were going to include hotels, theaters, small, business man uh, small beer manufacturers, uh, hotels and theaters seem like larger businesses. Um, lack of appeal, uh, parking requirements, uh, impact on our neighborhood valet programs, and uh, just really quickly, rear patio. We have rear patios. Uh, Thank you, sir. To be fair to everyone, you, yeah. well. you can submit your written comment as well. Sure. Hi. Good morning. My name is Stefan Bombe. I'm a restaurateur in Los Angeles. Uh, we employ around 350 people right now. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, we open restaurants all around the city, and those communities need us. Uh, every time we open a new restaurant, we have hundreds of people showing at the door, trying to get a job. Uh, they definitely need us to keep growing, keep opening restaurants, take care of their families. We offer health insurance by law, and uh, we need the city to help us to keep opening restaurants faster, generate more revenues, uh, sorry, more jobs, and more revenues, and pay more sales taxes. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Eileen Bertha. I'm a community organizer in United Coalition East, a prevention project of social model recovery system located in Skid Row. I'm here today to voice my opposition towards Council File Number 170981. It is a mistaken belief that to claim that speedy approvals are necessary by citing that on-site alcohol outlets will generate revenue. Without offsetting those figures that cost taxpayers, must bear for public safety services, including police, ambulance, sanitation, to say nothing of the increased public health costs of addiction and domestic violence. Moreover, the risk posed by increasing alcohol availability is not worth taking. It is foolhardy to assume that once problems occur, they will be addressed by enforcement of conditions. The city has never adequately funded the regulation and enforcement around nuisances. Lastly, low income neighborhoods, communities, Mainly communities of color endure the harm of rampant nuisance activity and crime around alcohol outlets, both on and off site. Taking consideration that each community is different and equitable and bias factors will arrive. Thank you. Thank you. To prevent alcohol related deaths and harms in the Los Angeles Metro, historically, alcohol related issues have negatively impacted our community safety and public health. And we as a society have mitigated the consequences of alcohol overconsumption through the regulation of alcohol businesses. 
The council member of Corian Streamline CUB Ordinance Draft is in the midst of processing over 900 liquor licenses without enforcing strict stipulations regarding how the alcohol is being presented, marketed, or advertised. This ordinance suppresses public comment and thus we as a community, the same community who have fought so hard to solve the social damage that alcohol-related problems have caused, have no control in our own territories. <coughs> we cannot support the Corian Streamline CUB Ordinance Draft unless it regulates these conditions as well as holds these businesses accountable via annual review and inspection. Thank you. Good morning, my name is General Jeff. I am the chair of the Skid Row Neighborhood Council Formation Committee. I am also a Skid Row community leader and I vehemently oppose um, this, this motion. Um, it, be, it is a total travesty and insult to the American democratic process. Um, the America's founding fathers are rolling over in their graves behind this. America is created to be a democracy. The most important point of a democracy is to the inclusion of the voice of the people. In order to, to, prove, to prove this motion takes America away from a democracy and turns it into nothing more than a capitalist society. This is a travesty to we the people in the United States of America, specifically in the city of Los Angeles. In Skid Row, um, you know, we have Skid Row landlords that uh, provide housing for homeless folks, mental health folks, and folks that struggle with substance abuse, more specifically alcohol. They will be chasing alcohol permits instead of caring for homeless people that need to be focused on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a public health professional, and I'm also a member of the coalition to prove than alcohol-related harms in LA Metro. And I am here with parents and with treatment and prevention professionals, parents that can't come out, uh, parents that live in areas with alcohol outlets everywhere, including on sale. I am representing them today. We need a public hearing process for the community voice. We are part of the community. These businesses, yes, they are part of the community as well, but we need to also be heard. This is our public health and public safety, and we really need to consider um, us human beings first. Um, thank you. Thank you. Robert Mora, I am from Behavioral Health Services and a member of LADAPA. Um, this ordinance is supposed to help small businesses succeed, and it gives them all the benefits they need to succeed, but it gives them none of the responsibility. If you're going to streamline this and fast track these licenses or administrative whatever, you also be able to have to do the back end, be able to streamline the revocation process. Because right. as it is now, it takes three to five years to do a revocation process. And unless you're a dedicated person that has all the time in the world, you cannot attend all the hearings that are involved in the revocation process to lose this abatement. And the paperwork that you have to give is a mountain to say this person needs to be uh, taken out. And so my, my suggestion is that we need to streamline the revocation process if we're going to allow for streamlining. Thank you. Uh, vivienda pública y uh, vivo por más de 35 años y a mí me interesa mucho mi comunidad, pero no estoy de acuerdo con la con lo que uh, uh, quieren pasar ahorita. Good morning, my name is Elvira del Mira and I live in Good morning, my name is Delmira and I live in Pico Gardens community for over 35 years and I care deeply about my community but mostly I am here to share with you that I am in opposition of this uh, ordinance. Uh, porque yo, yo he luchado mucho por mi comunidad y uh, uh, porque antes había una, una licorería y una cantina en cada esquina y uh, nosotros teníamos muchas gangas que había en nuestra área Entonces uh, uh, estaba la juventud perdida. Entonces nosotros no queremos que nuestra juventud pierda, porque dónde está el futuro de nosotros. Another minute. Oh, okay. Another minute. Okay. So um, I have fought uh, for my community, and in the past we were inundated with bars and gang activity, and the ones that were most affected were our youth, and I don't want our youth to continue to suffer by uh, the alcohol problems. Entonces, ¿dónde va a quedar todo el trabajo que hemos hecho? Nosotros hemos luchado por muchas cosas y gracias a Dios ahorita no tenemos uh, uh, la juventud echada a perder. Ahorita está, uh, las gangas ya se han acabado un poco, pero 
si vuelve todo a, a dar las licencias para los restaurantes, para, para la venta de alcohol, entonces uh, uh, vamos a volver a lo mismo. Uh, si ahorita ya tenemos mucha gente en las calles, no podemos... Uh, We need to allow time to translate. Okay. So um, I have worked heavily in my community and I've noticed that the youth have improved and the gangs have been reduced and by adding alcohol that's going to be counterproductive and um, I don't want this to come back to my community. Es una, es una vergüenza Thank que you. no podamos uh, It's a shame este lidiar con la gente que está allá en las calles. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anna also needs translation. Okay. Buenos días, gracias por permitirme este espacio de estar aquí. Uh, mi nombre es Ana Hernández, soy de la comunidad de Boyle High, específicamente de Pico Garden y Las Casitas. Uh, nosotros, no, nosotros representamos a 300 familias y también gente que vive alrededor de, de, de nuestro vecindario. Nosotros no estamos de acuerdo con esta ley porque es dañino para los residentes. Le quita el poder a las comunidades también y seguir este proceso comunitario es muy importante para nosotros porque las comunidades son las que tienes que decidir qué es lo que necesita la comunidad. Um, good morning, my name is Ana Hernandez and I am um, from Pico Garden Casitas in Boyle Heights and I represent over 300 families and I am here to share my opposition because um, our community is suffering and um, eh, esta ley le quita el poder a las comunidades. Uh, because this law takes away from the community. Have, do you need an extra minute yeah. for translation? Ok, la comunidad que yo represento es bastante vulnerable porque ya nosotros hemos pasado estos problemas de, sobre alcohol, sobre drogas, violencia y entonces nosotros queremos ya una comunidad sana. No queremos más ventas de alcohol en nuestras comunidades. Eh, el, el alto índice de, de accidentes que ha habido en nuestra comunidad bajo la influencia de alcohol con choferes que están bajo esta... esta esta sustancia ha ocasionado infinidad de accidentes y ahorita en este momento estamos en este proceso también de luchando con el aburguesamiento de nuestra comunidad. Um, our community is a vulnerable community and I don't want the alcohol to continue to plague our community. Um, it, our health is being compromised with alcohol and um, we're also dealing with gentrification and this is something that alcohol contributes and um, we are concerned. <laughs> Oh, and also she mentioned that um, DUIs are on the rise and accidents are on the rise and this is clearly directed to with alcohol. Thank you. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry, the time's up. Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, next we have... To submit her paperwork to yes, please, if you have written comments, please do submit. That goes for everyone. Um, Next the Valley uh, believe the ordinance is a good change to expedite the permitting uh, for our tenants specifically. We're a mixed-use developer. We excluded and hope there can be future work in the future to incorporate these changes to some of the specific plan areas. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Steve Sand. I'm the chairman of the Westwood Community Council. I'll try to speak fast in one minute. I think this, this draft ordinance is significantly deficient and it, it, as it was noted, it ignores so many of the amending points that were submitted, ignoring over-concentration, failing to address the issue of any type of ability of the community to object where that is necessary. And I stated earlier that if the ABC is able to have a process where within a narrow window of time, um, if, if there is no objection in a community after proper notice to a neighbor council and other interested parties, then perhaps that license could be issued administratively. But in communities where there are significant impacts, public health and safety impacts, there needs to be the ability to have a hearing. The suggestion that the ABC is in any way a substitute is a completely false statement. I have been to many ABC processes. These are very legalistic, formalistic hearings. They require you to hire a lawyer. They use the rules of evidence. You can't even submit public health reports from Jonathan Fielding. You have to call Mr. Fielding and he has to testify using the hearsay evidence rule Thank you. is in no way a substitute. Thank you. What's the rest of your batting order? So we have uh, Wendy Sue Rosen, Keith Nakata, Stephanie uh, Bama, Adeline Berta. Go ahead. Um, my name is Wendy Rosen, and I would just like to say that because this new process takes the place of existing CUDs upon renewal, 
and many of us worked for years in the community in land use, and we worked with the LAPD, CD offices, neighborhood itself, especially impacted neighbors, to get to these conditions. You are basically expanding uses with no hearing. So a lot of our um, problems in our community come from these extended hours, and although it seems 7 to 11 because of the commercial corner works, um, we have more restrictive conditions in our community. We have more restrictive parking in our community. Um, as somebody said, there's valet issues and issues of, of circulation. Um, there's issues of happy hour where in our neighborhood, the police do not allow any private parties or any shutdown of restaurants for private parties because everybody pours. Downtown is different than small business districts, and that is not taken into consideration. <coughs> small neighborhoods with residential areas are very unique, and neighbors have to have input into the process. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Keith Nakata. Uh, I'm co-chair of the Planning and Land Use Committee of the City West Community Council. Um, I, I mainly came to, to get information today, but there were some things that uh, obviously uh, deserve uh, some comments. Removal of the uh, neighborhood council. To rep for the Boyle Heights Neighborhood nice. Council. But I am here today to share with you that um, this ordinance is um, concerning to me, and it's a bit reckless to overlook at vulnerable communities such as Boyle Heights. Our communities currently inundated with alcohol requests all the time. And they come in and we don't want to lose the right to be able to say what comes into our community. Having an uh, uh, ordinance that allows this and facilitates this does not look at the cost. And to say that nuisance abatement is the way to revocate this, this uh, permit is very dangerous because as we know, it takes so much time and effort to remove a license that's problematic. And that is reckless for communities such as Boyle Heights. We are hurting, we are oversaturated. We have so many alcohol related problems. DU are on the rise. We have so many problems. We do not need more alcohol. And to have this in our communities and to facilitate just to help some people at the expense of others does not make sense. The community needs to have a voice and we need to be present and we need to have protect those that are vulnerable. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, the chair of the Echo Park Neighborhood Council Land Use Committee. I'm only speaking personally right now, but I personally I do support this this ordinance uh, in principle. We hear a lot of CUVs, and these are the types of businesses that we really we put the odor through a lot of work, but these are the things we tend to find unobjectionable, um, and, and a lot of the concerns are eliminated with the strict conditions. What I would say, though, is that the communities, especially through the neighborhood councils, want to have some input, so I'd suggest that uh, the notification to the neighborhood councils goes out when the permit is first applied for, so there's a dialogue that can be started and then possibly include sort of a review, maybe after a year, where you suggest, you solicit the neighborhood council's views to sort of formalize their, the feedback to see how, if there are uh, violations or other concerns, and it could still be a streamlined process instead of the public hearing that we have, but that would uh, give the community a voice. Thank you. We're of a concept here in Los Angeles called Greenleaf Gourmet Chop Shop. We have eight locations, and I have been through the liquor license process eight times. Um, I am a proud Angelino and am very um, committed to serving healthy, fresh, organic food in an environment that is maintained and uh, responsible for our um, licenses and for our customers. I'd like to uh, show my support for this streamlining process. As people have said, it is arbitrary, it is um, incredibly expensive and time consuming to the point where in my last two openings, the openings after construction, after ABC process, after all of the hearings were delayed six to eight months, causing many people to lose their jobs, causing um, irrevocable damage to us financially, and uh, again, it's an arbitrary process. So, thank you. Hi, I'm Walter Schild. I'm a local restaurant owner, lives and uh, works in Los Angeles. I do support uh, the concept of the initiative we have been burdened, like the other restaurant owner, with uncertainty and months of delays and fees. We've had to lay off people we hired because we thought we were going to be able to start, only to have a delay. I actually think there's a lot of alignment with the drug and alcohol prevention staff. What you're offering is for a small amount of restaurants who serve food to allow wine or beer or a cocktail to be served. And the other issues that the neighborhoods are mentioning, we also don't support. We don't want unlimited alcohol, unlimited advertising happy hours, all of the problems I'm hearing affects us. A lot of the local restaurant owners 
want to offer local options in neighborhoods we can't currently afford to serve because of cost. So I support reasonable outreach with the community to jointly add some reasonable restrictions that are being discussed to the ordinance, but also it takes too long and is too expensive today to get a license and we can't open in Boyle Heights. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mi nombre es María Márquez, yo soy una madre de la comunidad. Estamos luchando, estamos en no más licorerías, en una organización no más licorerías porque no queremos la licencia. Uh, good morning, my name is uh, Marta, um, and I am a mother, and I am I work for a, a program that's uh, no more alcohol. Um, I represent an organ, a program that does not want more alcohol in the community. Y no queremos que se les otorgue la licencia porque pues es, tenemos muchos accidentes en los jóvenes, más cuando se gradúan, ¿qué pasa? Toman y muchos accidentes. Uh, we don't want license to be provided because um, we have too many youths dealing with accidents when they get the, the when they get the alcohol they get into accidents and we don't want more accidents that are youth related. No, pues no más esto es toda mi opinión, que yo no yo no estoy de acuerdo. Um, that's all I wanted to share. I just want to share that I am uh, against this. Yes. Hello, good morning. My name is Leo Reese. I am a community organizer for Community Center Emergency Room Project with a program of social model recovery systems. For the last five years, I have been listening to our participants describe their alcohol-related problems and how difficult it is to be sober when you have an alcohol establishment in every corner. On and off sales, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's another alcohol establishment. Our program has been working with community members to change environments to discourage alcohol-related problems and to promote understanding of the link between the environment and the health. Therefore, I am here in a position of the proposed restaurant beverage program, Council File 170981. For that reason, I mentioned, and on behalf of our members, we urge you to oppose this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. I'm on the neighborhood council. I won't say which one, because I'm not here representing them. But what really gets me upset is this one minute public uh, comment. When all that time was spent with that uh, question and answer period, this is the kind of stuff that I found out when I started fighting liquor licenses in our community, which is impoverished, which needs help. When you tell us, go ahead and write it, how many people of our people actually write and be, are able to text in? You, you, this is absolutely wrong. The public being left out is exactly the problem that we're having throughout our government. You know, take a look at Washington, D.C. They don't want us to talk. Now you guys don't want us to talk. And I know from coming to the plumbing, meeting, you folks don't want us to talk. So the first thing I want to make sure is that public comment gets increased, not decreased. And public comment does not cost money, folks. It costs me a lot of money fighting some of these guys that come in and try to abuse our community. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Tron, and I'm representing the West Side Impact Project. Um, your, our group will not support this ordinance unless conditions are incorporated, which we have a list of, but I'll just read a few. Um, when it comes to the MVIP um, the program, uh, it should be considered, I mean, it, once the, the permits are given, 12 months should, within the 12 months, it should be monitored. And then the, mo the being monitored should stay of the lifetime of the permit, just due to this is a permit process that is different from anything that LA City has ever done before. And the fees would cover the monitoring of this. Um, but also al not allowing public comment prior to this or a public invoice into this, prior, especially with the communities that are different from anything else. So we ask that not only are they um, just Thank you. not only permitted, I mean. I urge you to, um, yeah, to make a written I response. Mean, I hear Thank that you. the council also says, you know, that, that you. they're in consideration, but it I'm needs sorry, to, to move on to everyone, incorporate, to. not in consideration. Thank you. And I will please submit your written comments. To who? Um, you can oh, you do Esther. Yeah, or email it to prevent alcohol-related harms in Los Angeles um, Metro. Currently, there are over 7,800 businesses that sell alcohol operating in the city of LA. More than 1,000 new license applications are being processed right now. We cannot allow more alcohol into our neighborhoods unless there are significant protections for public health and safety. To add on, this ordinance takes away from our community's voice. This new ordinance would flood our neighborhoods with more businesses that sell alcohol without allowing any of the surrounding neighborhoods to have input. LA residents reject this ordinance unless it's changed to allow for public input and public appeal process. 
No two council member concordance reports ordinance without stronger standards for how, when, and where alcohol is sold. Thank you. Thank you. High five to you guys. Thank you so much for doing this. You eliminate a gigantic burden and bureaucracy. This does not create more licenses. It only simply makes the burden for a restaurateur to move their license or start a business, which restaurateurs are the number one provider of sales tax, the number one employer in the state of California, and the number one provider of uh, beginning <coughs> and, and starter jobs. So when you said that it eliminates the, uh, the, the cost from uh, 13000 down to 3000 it's actually $35,000. When I was starting my first restaurant, we paid all those fees plus expedited fees plus another 13000 and it took us two and a half years. My business that I put all my heart and soul in almost failed because of the bureaucracy of the, the city. It took them so long. So this will just not create more licenses because that's regulated by the state but allow restaurateurs to open easier. Thank you, and what was your name, sir? Joseph. Joseph. Okay. Petrosa. Thank you. So, uh, Tad Yenwin, uh, Echo Park Neighborhood Council Chair, not here speaking on behalf of the Neighborhood Council. Also Boyle Heights uh, restaurant owner and business person and community activist. Um, culture of drinking, uh, culture is what supports Alcoholism culture is what needs to prevent alcoholism. Prohibition does not work. It has never worked. So providing an alternative to that culture is really important. Having said that, my recommendations for the policy is that alcohol service not be tied to hours of food service, but be limited independently. So it only talks about limiting alcohol service. Because if you tie it directly to food, um, you know, or limit food, then you're emphasizing the alcohol. No happy hours, no drink minimum. Stabilizing the job market is what this is about. Stabilizing the business environment is what this is about. Allowing restaurants to stay open and in business is, is a huge benefit to the community, regardless of the tax base. If we provide that many jobs, and it's a very uh, labor-intensive field, then that really helps the community. Thank you. Thank you. Blanche, I'm co-chair of the Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance. There's going to be a flood of new alcohol businesses should this ordinance pass. To say otherwise is disingenuous. There is essentially a one-to-one -one correlation between a land use permit and ABC because it rarely, 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 if ever, denies a license if a land use permit has been granted. We are public health professionals. We know that restaurants are not benign entities when it comes to alcohol. Happy hours, drink specials, minimum drink requirements, pitchers of beer all have a bigger health, public health impact than off-sale establishments. So we oppose this. We understand we want to make it easier for small businesses, but we absolutely oppose this in its current form. Three things that need to be stronger alcohol conditions. No happy hours, no drink specials, no minimum drink requirements. Absolutely necessary. Stronger enforcement mechanism. If we're going to flood our neighborhoods with alcohol businesses, they have to be accountable and absolutely must have public hearing process incorporated. We work with communities. We know how they struggle with noise, uh, hours of operation. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Stephanie Okolo and I'm here as a member of the Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance. I'm here today to speak in opposition of Council File 17-0981. This ordinance is irresponsible and currently lacks public input as well as guarantee of enforcement and protection to communities. Streamlining CUB license only benefits businesses, not the public. LA Dapper proposes that the ordinance include guidelines for strict sale and service, including a public hearing process prior to issuing the permits and a method for imposing and revoking permits to businesses in violation. We support this, the streamlined CUB draft only in the event that these changes are included. Thank you. Thank you. For such a model recovery system, an organization with more than 20 years of experience working with residents in Boyle Heights, Lincoln Heights, as well as in downtown Los Angeles. As we look at the number of, and type of alcohol license in our communities, we have found that time and time again, community members don't see a need for new, for any newer alcohol outlets, be they on or off selling establishment. So expedite the process times and lowering the cost for restaurants is not what our community needs. It should be noted that the number of on-site premises in City 14 is one of the highest when compared to LA County. Excessive alcohol sales have been shown to discourage other retail uses and increases crime and violence, including drunk uh, driving. For this reason, we urge you to oppose this proposal. Thank you. 